So we're going to get the show going. Our next presenter uh, is a graphic designer by trade. He's been doing design in town for about 18 years. Uh, he's a painter, illustrator, and he has also done some volunteer work at WEFT and 40 North. Uh, he also performs in a couple of bands in town. Uh, is somebody here shorter than me? So that's, uh, yes. That's a, uh, and not by a little bit either, but yes. Uh, so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Ralph Rotner. Ralph. <laughs> Short, he's a fire plug. Check him out. One and only. <laughs> Ralph Rother the third, born in Chicago, Illinois. This little fire plug grows up to be the Super height of five feet tall, 150 pounds, entertained by Bozo, Cookie, Ray Rayner, Godzilla, and Garfield the Goose. And then his grandpa, Ralph Rother Sr., a.k.a. the Duke, the Grouch, a grizzled WW2 veteran, truck driver, old-style drinker, and wrestling fan. I first saw wrestling in his bedroom on a black-and-white television, and I saw all kinds of characters, like the Crusher and Dick the Bruiser. I saw Andre the Giant. I saw Wilbur Snyder, superstar Billy Graham. I saw King Kong Brody and Crusher Blackwell. And then we all decided to move to Southern Illinois. <laughs> to a town of 2000 where everybody was white and were related. <laughs> but we watched wrestling from Channel 11 St. Louis every Sunday at 1130. And it was awesome. And my grandfather clipped out the newspaper clippings for me. They clipped the, these, uh, these, these clippings were in the newspaper like real sport. Then I watched a show called ICW Wrestling, owned by this man, Angelo Poffo, a.k.a. The Miser, International Championship Wrestling, based out of Lexington, Kentucky, where the star players were Lanny Poffo and Randy Poffo. And this was my hero, Ronnie Garvin, the one-man gang, the anti-hero. He spoke with confidence, conviction. He made fun of the bad guys. He was the Southeastern heavyweight champion. He was a brawler who fought for justice, and he despised one man. And that man was this guy, the crazy, insane, muscle-bound, psychotic, bad villain, million dollar robe wearing world heavyweight champion Randy Macho Man Savage before he became famous in the WWF. Savage jumped over announce tables. He broke glass on his head. He was crazy and I started acting crazy too. Me and my father watched it all the time. Every Friday night at 11.30, I couldn't wait for it to come to town. Maybe it'll come to my town. And then Garvin, he became my idol. I made a shirt that said Ronnie Garvin. I wore it to school. People heckled me. They, they just made fun of me, but I couldn't help it. And then I made it my own championship belt, and I chiseled it with a hammer and a screwdriver. And, I, and I, this is a precursor to graphic design, and I designed the logo. It was crazy. I loved wrestling so much. And this is my father putting my cousin in a headlock. My dad was, he was a crazy teenager, foul mouth. I was scared of getting a swat by him. And as a, you know, in ICW, he would take me to the matches. And uh, there was a cage match incident. And this before wrestling was exposed. And he jumped over the cage, uh, over the railing and went to the cage. And he thought I was going to get into the action. 
and this is Lanny Poffel, the exact opposite of his brother Randy, mild-mannered, soft-talking, a poet. My sister got a kiss from him in Benton, Illinois, while buying his photograph. And these are two of my prized possessions. These used to be stapled all over the telephone poles in the cities. And then my dad would drive around before the matches, and we'd steal them right off of there. <laughs> and my wife framed one of them for me for Christmas recently. So then it happened. Wrestling came to Cesar, Illinois. I couldn't believe it. Leaping Lanny versus Randy Macho Man Savage in the main event. This was awesome. Little did I know, little did I know the fame that the Macho Man would be when I was right there next to him. When he came out to hot stuff in his million dollar robe, I was so jacked. <laughs> and then I discovered girls. <laughs> this is Candy Newell. She's five foot eight and a crazy wild redhead. She was the first person to kiss me in my 1969 Maverick. And then I, wrestling kind of took a back seat after that. And then 1998, this guy, Goldberg. My dad calls me up. He goes, have you seen this guy, Goldberg? And I'm like, no. And then I realized there was a war going on, WCW versus WWF. Every Monday night, shows back to back. It was insane. I was reignited. The fire plug was born. So... It was different this time around. There was the internet. There were wrestling blogs and podcasts. And I learned there was a totally different language. Matches were put together by a booker. And wrestlers talked to each other and called each move as they would occur. And I said, wait a second. Wrestling is freaking phenomenal. I can't believe it. It's like vaudeville. It's athletic, creative, drama, excitement. Wrestling is real. And then I started dressing up like them. I did a commercial like this guy, Taz. I did a commercial and tried to act like Taz in a, in a WWF contest. I didn't win, but I, I kind of looked like him. <laughs> oh, so throughout the years, I dress up like a wrestler because I can, because it's fun. I love to do it. I even did it in an ad where I work. I can't help myself. It, it just gives me creativity. It gives me an outlet for my loud mouth, big personality. <laughs> oh, yeah. So look, I started collecting dolls, dolls, and dolls, and books. And I even designed that book right there. And it was made by Dave Meltzer. He's one of the number one pro wrestling uh, writers in the industry. And I love wrestling. <laughs> so it's kind of hard when you say, oh, I'm going to get my whole family involved. <laughs> I don't force them to do it. It just happens. It just happens. We like to dress up. When we're not wearing clothes, we like to dress up. All right? Thank you.